The World According to Humphrey by Betty G. Burney, read for CES by Lacey McKenzie. Chapter 11. TV or Not TV Wow, Friday was a great adventure because AJ took me on the school bus. It was noisy and smelly and very, very bumpy, and just about everyone on the bus wanted to get a look at me, including the driver, Miss Victoria. It was exciting, almost too exciting, because AJ couldn't hold my cage steady, and I was slipping and sliding and bouncing until I was quite dizzy. Sorry, Humphrey, I'm trying to hold still, AJ told me, as someone bumped his elbow and sent me sprawling onto the floor of my cage. It's all right, I squeaked weakly. The bus led us off close to AJ's house. It was a two-story old house with a big porch. As soon as I entered, I got a warm welcome from AJ's mom, his younger brother Ty, his little sister Dee Lee, and his baby brother Bo. Anthony James, introduce us to your little friend, his mom said, greeting us. Anthony James? Everyone at school called him AJ by his initials, or just A. This is Humphrey, he answered. Hello, Humphrey, said Mrs. Thomas. So how was your day, Anthony? Lousy. Garth kept shooting rubber bands at me. He won't leave me alone. But you used, you two used to be friends, his mother said. Used to be, said A.J., until he turned into a jerk. Mom patted her son on the shoulder. Well, you've got the whole weekend to get over it. Now take Humphrey into the den and get him settled. Miss Brisbane called him Lower Your Voice A.J. because A.J. always talked extra loud in class. I soon noticed that everyone at A.J.'s house talked extra loud. They had to because in the background the TV was always blaring. Now every house I've been in so far has had a TV. Even Miss Mack had a TV and I enjoyed some of the shows I'd seen with her. There's one channel that has nothing but the most frightening shows about wild animals attack attacking one another. I mean wild, like tigers and bears and hippopotamus. Gee, I hope that's not on our vocabulary test in the near future. Those shows make me appreciate the protection of a nice cage, as long as the lock doesn't quite lock. There's another channel that only has people in funny looking clothes, dancing and singing in very strange places. It makes me glad that I have a fur coat and don't have to fi figure out what to wear every day. Mostly I like the cartoon shows. Sometimes they have mice and rabbits, other interesting rodents, although I've never seen a hamster show yet. Anyway, the difference at the Thomas's house is that the television is on all the time. There's a TV on the table across from the big comfy couch and a big comfy chair and someone's almost always sitting there watching. I know because they put my cage down on the floor next to the couch. I had a very good view of the TV. I couldn't always hear the TV though because AJ's mother had a radio in the kitchen which was blaring most of the time while she cooked or did crossword puzzles or talked on the phone. No matter what she did, the radio was always on. When AJ's dad came home from work, he plopped down on the couch and watched TV while he played with the baby. Then AJ and Tide plugged in some video games and played while dad watched. Dee Lee listened to the radio with her mom and danced around in the kitchen. When it was time for dinner, the whole family took plates and sat in the den so they could watch TV while they ate. Then they watched TV some more. They made popcorn and kept watching. Finally, the kids went to bed. The baby first, then Dee Lee, then Ta and AJ. After they were all in their rooms, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas kept watching TV and ate some ice cream. Later, Miss Thomas yawned loudly. I've had it, Charlie. I'm going to bed, and I suggested you do, too, she said. But Mr. Thompson just kept on watching, or at least he kept on sitting there until he fell asleep on the couch. I ended up watching the rest of the wrestling match without him. Unfortunately, the rest wrestler was rooting for Thor of Glore lost. Finally, Mr. Thomas woke up, yawned, flickered off the TV, and went upstairs to bed. Peace at last. But the quiet only lasted about ten minutes. Soon, Mom brought Bo downstairs and gave him a bottle while she watched TV. When Bo finally fell asleep, Mrs. Thomas yawned and flickered off the TV. Blessed, blessed relief. 
Five minutes later, Mr. Thomas returned. Sorry, hamster, can't sleep, he mumbled to me as he flickered, flickered on the remote. He watched and watched and then dozed off again, but the TV stayed on, leaving me no choice but to watch a string of commercials for car waxes, weight-reducing programs, exercise machines, and red-hot harmonica classics. The combination of being nocturnal and being bombarded with sight and sound kept me wide awake. At the crack of dawn, Dee Lee tiptoed into the room, dragging her doll by its hair and switched to a cartoon show about princesses. She watched another show about cats and dogs, scary. Then Mr. Thomas woke up and wanted to check some sports scores. Mrs. Thomas handed him the baby and his bottle, and soon the older boys switched over to the video games and their parents watched them play. It was loud, 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 but the Thomases didn't seem to notice. What do you want for breakfast, Mom shouted. What? Dad shouted louder. What do you want for breakfast? Mom yelled. Toaster waffles, Dad yelled louder. I can't hear the TV, Tiles hollered, turning up the volume. Do you want juice, Mom screamed. Can't hear you, Dad responded. And so it went. With each new question, the sound on the TV would be turned up higher and higher until it was possibly, positively deafening. Then Mom switched on her radio. The Thomases were a perfectly nice family, but I could tell it was going to be a very long and noisy week unless I came up with a plan. So I spun on my wheel for a while to help me think, and I thought and thought and thought some more, and then it came. The big idea. I probably would have come up with it sooner if I could have heard myself think. Around noon, the Thomases were all watching the football game on the TV, or rather Mr. Thomas was watching the football game on TV, while AJ and Ty shouted questions at him. Mrs. Thomas was in the kitchen, listening to the radio and talking on the phone. Dee Lee played peekaboo with the baby in the cozy chair. No one was watching me, so I carefully opened the lock that doesn't lock on my cage and made a quick exit. Naturally, no one could hear me skittering across the floor as I made my way outside of the room over to the space behind the TV cabinet. Then, with great effort, I managed to pull out the plug, one of the most difficult feats of my life. The TV went silent, beautifully, blissfully, silently, silent. So silent, I was afraid to move. I waited behind the cabinet, frozen. The Thomases stared at the TV screen as the picture slowly went dark. Ty, did you hit that remote? Mr. Thomas asked. Nah, it's under the table. Anthony, go turn that thing on again, Mr. Thomas said. AJ jumped up and hit the power button on the TV. Nothing happened. It's broken, he exclaimed. Mrs. Thomas rushed in from the kitchen. What happened? Mr. Thomas explained that the TV had gone off and they discussed how old it was five years, whether it had a guaranteed, no one knew, and if Mr. Thomas could fix it, he couldn't. Everything was fine, and it went off, just like that. I guess we'd better take it in and get it fixed, Mr. Thomas said. How long will it take, Dee Lee asked in a whiny voice. I don't know, her dad replied. How much will it cost, Mrs. Thomas asked. Oh yeah, her husband said, I forgot. We're a little low in the funds right now. The baby began to cry. I thought the rest of the family might start crying, too. Well, I get paid next Friday, Dad said. AJ jumped up and waved his hands. That's a whole week away. I'm going to Grandma's house. Her TV works, said Ty. Me too, Dee Lee chimed in. Grandma's got her bridge club over there tonight, Mom said. I know, said Dad. Let's go to the movie. Do you know how much it costs to go to the movie? Mom asked. Besides, we can't take the baby. Oh. They whined and bickered for quite a while. They got so loud I managed to scamper back to my cage unnoticed. Then I guess I dozed off. Remember, I had hardly had a wink of sleep since I'd arrived. The bickering was nice, soothing background after all the racket. I was only half asleep when the squabbling changed, but there was nothing to do. Dee Lee whined. Her father chuckled, nothing to do. Girl, my brothers and I used to spend weekends at Grandma's house, and I never had a TV. Wouldn't allow it. What did you do? AJ asked. Oh, we were busy every minute, he recalled. We played card games, board games, and word games, 
And we dug in her garden and played tagged, he chuckled again. A lot of times we just sat on the porch and talked. My grandma, she could talk. What'd you talk about, Ty wondered. Oh, she'd tell us stories about her growing up, about ghosts and funny things, like the time her uncle was waking walking in his sleep and went to church in his pajamas. Miss Thomas gasped. Oh, go on now, Charlie. I'm just telling you what she told us. He woke up in the middle of the service, looked down, and there he was in his blue and white striped pajamas. I let out a squeak of surprise and the kids all giggled. M then Miss Thomas told us a story about a girl in her class who came to school in her slippers by accident one day. Yes, the fuzzy kind, she explained with a big smile. They talked and talked, and Dad got out some cards, and they played a game called Crazy Eights, and another one called Pig, where they put their fingers on their nose and laughed like hyenas. When Bo fussed, they took turns jiggling him on their knees. After a while, Miss Thomas gasped, Goodness sakes, it's an hour past your bedtimes! The children all groaned and asked if they could play cards tomorrow, and in a few minutes all the Thomases had gone to bed, and it was quiet, 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 for the first time since I'd arrived. Tip 11. Be careful. If set-free hamsters are ex experts at disappearing in a room.